Have you ever seen green beans this long? These are called yard long beans, also known as Chinese noodle beans or asparagus beans. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the botanical name for yard long beans, here it is, but they are a variety of cowpea. They're named for their exceptionally long pods, which can grow up to three feet in length. These beans are native to Southeast Asia and are commonly used in Asian cuisine due to their crisp texture and slightly sweet flavor. They grow especially well in hot and humid conditions when regular beans fail. Because of this, I switched to growing yard long beans during the summer. So come on, let me show you how to grow this unique and productive crop from seed all the way to harvest. All right, so let's talk about cultivar selection because the first thing you gotta do is go buy some seeds. When you're shopping around for the seeds, you'll notice that they come in a wide range of colors. Standard yard long bean color is green, like this dark green yard long bean right here. But it also can come in red, like the red noodle yard long bean pictured here, and purple and white. On average, yard long bean pods get around the same length, about three feet, hence the name yard long bean. But there are some cultivars that are even extra long. In my opinion, I feel like there really is no difference. So it just depends, what do you wanna grow? I do like growing a purple, red, or white because the color really pops out and stands out amongst the leaves and that makes it a little bit easier to harvest. And if you need seeds, you can find some on my website for many of the cultivars that I mentioned in this video, along with unique plants and monthly growing guides. All right, so now that you have your seeds, let's talk about site selection and requirements for this crop. First up and most importantly, it needs a vertical structure to grow along. This is a cattle panel arch trellis that I made. It's so much fun to grow these on like an arch trellis because then the pods just hang down and you can harvest them. For the most part, all of the cultivars of yard long beans are vining plants. I have seen very rarely some seeds for a bush type, but in general, what you're gonna find is a vining plant. So it does require a vertical structure to grow on. Another really easy to build trellis system that I use to grow lots of different crops is a system built with some T-posts. I just install two T-posts, one on either side, and I get a three quarter inch electrical conduit pipe I recommend that you don't use anything thinner than a three quarter inch because then it has a tendency to bend. I find these PVC tees and I fit it right on top of the T post and then I jam the electrical conduit pipe right there on top. The pipe actually sits on top of the T post so that way it doesn't slide down and the PVC tee just keeps everything in place. And then I get this mesh vinyl trellis from Amazon and I'll put links in the description below. This is a very heavy duty mesh and it's lasted me years. So I take this mesh and I weave it through just like you would a curtain. These are so easy to build. I can build it all by myself with no tools besides a T-post driver. It easily comes apart. So if I need to rearrange my whole garden for the next season or something, I can just easily move this stuff around. And it's hurricane proof, at least in category three, cause I got hit by two hurricanes last year and these trellis systems stayed up, no problems. I like to grow beans, yard long beans, cucumbers, even tomatoes, and heavier crops like lufa and trombocino rapicante on this type of trellis system. Well, let's talk about some of their other requirements. This is a tropical and sun loving crop. It does require full sun or a minimum of eight hours of light per day. As far as soil requirements, I mean, it will grow great in soil that is heavy in organic matter, but it also grows great in poor soils like Florida native sandy soil. They are in the cowpea family, which is known to grow very well in poor soils anyway, so no need to really worry about amending. All right, so now that you have the perfect spot picked out to grow your yard long beans, let's talk about when and how you should sow these seeds. And here's what the seeds look like in general. This crop does not like the cold, so you need to wait until your last average spring frost day to direct sow the seeds. Or if you want to get an early start on your season, or if you're having issues with germination, maybe your soil is too cold, wet, or the critters are digging the seeds out, you can sow one seed per cell of a 72 cell seed tray and basically make your own transplant plugs. Just make sure you pop them out and transplant into the garden at the three week mark, because after three weeks, they easily get root bound. Here's a 72 cell seed tray that I have ready to go. I've pre-filled it with sterile potting mix and moistened it up. By the way, if you wanna find good quality seed trays like this one, I highly recommend that you visit your local hydroponic store because they usually carry lots of these in all sorts of different sizes at a good price, but that are made out of much thicker plastic that will last several years. I find these at my local big box store, but they're just not the same. The plastic is very thin and literally it only lasts me one season. 
month when I want to get a head start on my yard long bean harvest. I will backtrack three weeks from my last average spring frost date, which for me here in Orlando, Florida zone 9B is about the second week of February. So towards the middle or end of January, I will start sowing seeds in these trays and it's very, very easy. You just take one seed per cell, make a little indent, no more than one inch deep. Keep the soil nice and moist and they will germinate usually in three to five days. Once they germinate, they will need some light. So I have an indoor setup with some um, grow lights, not really grow lights, I use shop lights because they're um, less expensive. If it's too cold outside still, then you know keep these indoors, the cold will stunt them or kill them. If you want to direct sow seeds, you need to wait until your last average spring frost date is totally past. This crop does not like the cold. I'm going to show you how to direct sow the seeds, but we're going to pretend because I don't have the spot ready yet for my next succession planting of yard long beans. So I'm just going to use these grow bags as demonstration. So right underneath your trellis system, you're just going to dig a straight trench. Not very deep. I mean, you plant these bean seeds like no more than one inch deep. Then you're going to take your seeds and you're going to sprinkle in some seeds in there. I don't count them or space them. None of that. Just sprinkle them in there. They're going to be fine. Trust me. Typically crops that have very thin vines don't have very big root systems. So you can kind of cram them in there. They're going to grow fine. They're not going to compete with each other, especially when it comes to beans or yard long beans. They don't need a lot of nutrients anyways to really thrive. So you don't have to fertilize this nothing. I just sprinkle them in there, cover it up with soil, keep it nice and moist. They'll germinate in like three to five days. Now that they're growing in your garden, let's talk about some of the other requirements. In terms of water, they like to stay consistently moist. They don't really like long periods of being dry. If they do dry out, it can cause the pods to have a weird texture or just be misshapen. As far as pruning, there really is no need to be pruning this type of crop. But if you do see some heavily damaged or diseased leaves, it's okay to pull those off the plant because at that point, those leaves are just sucking nutrients out of the plants. They're not giving back anything. Plus they're a host now for whatever pathogen it is that's causing the leaf diseases. These are a tropical crop and they do have a pretty high heat, pest and disease type of tolerance. So you're probably not gonna get very many issues when you try to grow this. The most common thing you're going to get are these black aphids. I get them every time that I grow this. And surprisingly, I don't see any right now, but I know they're coming. <laughs> now here's the thing with aphids. They are a food source for ladybugs and a lot of other beneficial insects. So honestly, I just leave it alone. I don't even treat for it no matter how gross it looks. If it gets really bad, you can spray them off with water from your hose to kind of knock them off your plants. In some very rare cases, I do get an infestation that's just really bad that I have to do something about it. You know you have a bad infestation when the plant's health just looks like it's declining because there's so many aphids that they're sucking the juices out of your plants or if the pods are growing all weird and misshapen. In those cases, I do decide to treat for it. I like to use an organic insecticidal soap. You can even make your own homemade soaps with some water and a couple drops of a very strong smelling essential oil like peppermint or rosemary. Put a few drops of an all-natural soap like Dr. Bonner's. Please don't use Dawn dish soap. That's a detergent, not a soap. Spray your plants in the evening time so that way they will be nice and dry by morning. You could also spray with spinosad, which is considered organic. It basically kills soft-bodied insects on contact. When it comes to the leaf diseases, you're probably going to see similar things as, you know, bean crops. The number one thing that I notice is rust or like a blight. This is what it looks like right here. I mean, you can prune these off and that will help slow down the progression of whatever pathogen it is that causes this to the rest of your plant. However, I don't worry about it too much. I'm gardening in Florida. We get rain every single day here during the summer. So it is completely normal that your crops are going to get powdery mildew diseases, whatever. I have one treatment for all leaf diseases and that's one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. Some people even comment that they think it helps with some of the more soft bodied insects like aphids as well. If you think that's true, please comment below and let me know. But it definitely does help with powdery mildew, blight, funguses, molds, like whatever. It's hydrogen peroxide, it kills pathogens. And it's pretty safe to use in the garden, but again, just make sure you spray in the evening when all the pollinators are gone. This is a short crop. These plants aren't going to live very long in your garden. It's not like a tomato, which in my garden can live for nine months. <laughs> It'll live maybe like four or five months or so. And I'll explain kind of like the life cycle. Your plants should start producing pods at around two to two and a half months. So it's very quick cropping, which is nice. The first flush of bean pods is usually the best. You're going to get the most production with the first flush and higher quality pods. Once you pick everything off, you'll kind of notice the plant stops, like it stops growing. It looks like it's not doing anything. Just 
leave it in a few more weeks it'll put on another flush of bean pods that second flush isn't as good as the first flush but hey you'll harvest some more beans from it after that the plants are pretty much done so at that point i decided to plant something else so that's why i say these plants are quick to start producing and very quick to just end their life cycle it's a good idea to succession sow your yard long beans that way you can extend the harvest all summer long I like to pop in new seeds, just direct sowing them as soon as I start seeing flowers on the first round of succession crop. That way the first crop will start producing while the other one is starting to grow and you'll just be able to continuously harvest throughout the summer. And the final care tip when it comes to growing yard long beans is don't fertilize. They grow very well in poor soils. Actually too much nitrogen will cause the plants to produce a lot of green leafy growth instead of flowers and bean pods. I have an extra tip for you to increase production of your bean pods. But first, if you're enjoying this video and want to learn more about gardening, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you get notified of every time I post something new. My expert tip is to pinch off the growth tips. This forces the plant to branch off. More branches means more flowers and that means more beans. All right, so let me show you what I mean by pinching off the growth tips. So every day as I walk through my garden and check up on things, I take a look and try to identify any of the tips of the vines here. You're just going to pinch off this growth tip right here with your fingers, just like that. And now this plant is going to branch off right here. It's going to send out two new branches. So now you have two more branches instead of just the one. So I just go through, pinch off all of those growth tips. All right, so now we're at the point that everyone has been waiting for, the harvest. Hopefully by following all of my tips, you're harvesting in about two, two and a half months. Now there is a sweet spot when it comes to harvesting your yarn long beans. You obviously want to leave them on the vine to get as long and big as possible, but harvest them before the texture is just not that great. A good indicator that the pod is ready for harvest is when the diameter or thickness is like a pencil. This one right here is a good example. Now when you're harvesting, you want to be careful not to damage this tip right here. So when you harvest, you want to pinch off the bean right at the top, but don't damage this growth tip because that's where the vine will continue growing and producing. Just like when you grow bush beans or pole beans, staying on top of harvesting will cause the plant to continue producing more and more pods. So I like to come through here and harvest them about every other day. If you let the pods go to seed, you're basically signaling to the plant that, hey, you've gone to seed, you're done with your life cycle and you can die. So that's why keeping up with harvesting is important. Now I do have an example of a bean pod that I didn't harvest in time and now it's not that great. Here's an example right here. It's getting lighter in color because the pod is just losing its texture and flavor at that point. And the seeds inside are starting to swell up. If you can clearly see the defined shape of the seeds inside the pod, it's too late. <laughs> When you harvest them at the right time, they're nice and crisp and they have a crunchy texture. When they go past due like this one, they're really flimsy and it's, it's not good for eating. Another indicator that it's too late is if you pinch down on the pod and you feel like air pockets in there, it's soft, it's, it's just not good for eating. You can either decide to just prune this one off so that way you don't let your plant go to seed. If you want to save your own seed, then just leave the pods on the vine. They will dry out and turn brown. And that's a perfect stage for harvesting the pod, cracking it open and saving the seeds. I like to store my yard long beans in Ziploc bags in the fridge for about two weeks. If I don't use them up by then, I quick blanch them for about one minute and then drain them and dry the pods before storing in a freezer bag. These beans are very versatile and can be used in stir fries, curries, salads, and even pickled. If you have any favorite recipes or great ways to preserve a yard long bean harvest, please comment below because I need ideas. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, like, and subscribe to my channel for more gardening tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Happy gardening.